Welcome everyone to Vested Interest. This is Shane and before we get into the video I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone who's taken the time to watch, comment, and like the videos and a special thank you to those who subscribe to the channel. I really do appreciate it. The channel continues to grow because of people like you and if you have not done so already and hit that subscribe button down below, join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the Vested Interest community, building a community of like-minded dividend growth investors so we can share our experiences, portfolio updates like this one I do every Sunday. That's what this video is. After another crazy week in the market, uh, we're going to look at all the activity. I also do a stock pick of the day video, Monday through Thursday. So if you have any stocks that you'd like me to add to that video series, go ahead and drop them down below and I'll work them into the rotation. And hit that notification bell down below so you're notified whenever we put out any new content and hit that thumbs up like button if you find any value in the content as we go through the videos. We did add one thousand five hundred and sixty one dollars in new capital let's jump right in we do do options as well so that's where we're going to start so no options this week we did throw a few out there none of them were picked up the market is really you know fluctuating on a day-to-day -day basis so it's hard to get anyone to buy these options especially whenever you're trying to do covered calls and they may be pulling back typically uh, you want the the stocks to be going up whenever you're doing covered calls some of the ones i'm trying to do covered calls on right now are they seem like they drop every other day by you know 20 30 cents a dollar here uh, but that's all right. We'll see if we can get into any options plays next week. But for this week, nothing to add. We did have a one company payout dividends on August 25th. Williams Sonoma, ticker WSM, out of the consumer discretionary sector, paid us a whopping $1.80. And that is okay. We will take every penny that we, we can get here. This is on uh, two shares that I own of Williams and Sonoma whenever I was running a wheel on this one. I'd love for this to drop back. You can see here it paid out. Uh, at 180 and it bought those shares at $141.04. We do have the drip set and that is the only downside to the drip. Sometimes whenever you do get paid out dividends and the companies are overvalued, it's going to buy them what the market value is. So that is one downside to the to the negative on the drip here. I would not or am not purchasing uh, Williams and Sonoma in the $140 range except whenever it's repurchase of dividends or reallocation of dividends. Uh, because I like this under 125, but that's the drip. You just have to buy it, whatever it is at the time. And the that $1.80 bought us 0 0.01276 more shares of Williams and Sonoma. And those shares added an, an additional four cents over the next year. So again, not big numbers here, but that's all right. We'll take every penny we can get. Now we get to August 21st. This is the first day we put any new capital into the portfolio. We added $172.24 here. We picked up Sabaney Stillwater, two shares there, ticker SBSW. This is out of the material sector. We picked up those shares at $12.48. We also added to Valet, another one out of the material sector, uh, ticker VALE. And we, those 13 shares we added at 100, or I'm sorry, $12.29. And I'm sorry, up here at Sabaney Stillwater, we added those at $6.24 per share, a total of $12.48. We added the valet shares at $12.29 for a total of $159.76. All total, $172.24 invested on August 21st. And these 15 shares total, 13 shares of valet, two shares of SBSW, added $10.06 more passive income over the next year. And we weren't done. We went back and added our biggest tranche for the week, August 23rd. We added $1,389.48. And with those funds, we picked up one more share of Sabaney Stillwater. This is really showing a lot of value under anything under, you know, really $8.50, $9 on this one I'm buying. So I've been nibbling at this one for a while. This is out of the material sector, SB, ticker SBSW. Picked up that one share at $6.88. We added three more shares to our AT&T position, ticker T, this is out of the communications sector. Uh, we picked up those shares for $14.18, and this is under my cost basis of around 16, so I'd like to continue to decrease my cost basis. Probably will continue to nibble on this one as well. You know, three shares, five shares, maybe 10 shares here and there, so long as it, it stays down here in the 14, 15, $16 range, I will continue to do that. 
CVS pulled back again, so it is under my cost basis. We added another 10 shares, ticker CVS out of the healthcare sector at $66.32 per share. And we're not done filling out our next era energy position. So we added 10 more shares to NEE. This is out of the utility sector. And we added those shares at $67.69. And this is the one right here, next era energy, that I tried to do a covered call on. Uh, again, no one, no one jumped at it. So I'll try to roll another covered call next week. This $1,389.48, and these shares that we added here added an additional $46.75 in passive income over the next year. So the total invested for the week comes out to $1,561.72, and all total we added $56.86 in passive income over the next year. Very nice to see the portfolio continue to grow and the, the passive income continue to pile up, whether it's me purchasing new shares or it's companies like Williams and Sonoma, even though it was a small payout, paying out their dividends and buying more fractional shares in this case and adding to that future passive income as well. That is what dividend, the dividend growth snowball is all about. Uh, not just the capital that you add, but the capital that is added by the positions already in the portfolio. So it just compounds that growth over time. Now, a quick run through the sector allocations. Communications is sitting at 8.37% of the portfolio. Consumer discretionary, these are those two Williams and Sonoma shares, 0.17. I, again, would really love to continue to add to this position, like it to pull back under 125, but it's really jumped up into the 130, 140 ranges this week. Uh, so hopefully we see a pullback, but uh, you never know. The market does crazy things. Consumer staples sitting at 5.45% of the portfolio. Energy makes up 6.33%. Financials sits at 10.17% of the portfolio. Healthcare, the largest chunk here at 18.51, that uh, addition to CVS helped increase this a little bit more. At some point, I will stop adding to the healthcare sector, but for now, I'm seeing a lot of value there, so we're gonna continue to run this up. I don't like any one sector to get above, let's say 20, 25%. Uh, so again, at some point, this will just be too big. And as these uh, positions rebound, uh, I'll look to add in other sectors as well. Industrial sitting at 8.42% of the portfolio. Technology makes up 8.77%. 8 Materials, second largest position in the portfolio, 14.83%. Utilities, this is that next area energy position, makes up 6.24% of the portfolio. REITs in real estate sitting in third at 1274 And no ETFs. I consider my overall portfolio my own ETF that I am building out. Let's continue on. Now, what you all like to see from week to week, this is the full portfolio update, full transparency. I will show this every week, whether I'm up, whether I'm down, whether the market's up or down or floating sideways. Here is the ticker, all the positions within the portfolio, how many total shares I own of each, the current price as of the close of business on Friday, market value, how much it's worth currently, my average cost per share, my purchase price, so how much I have into it. So you'll see my total returns, whether I'm up or down. If it's in the red, that means I am down and I am down a little bit on the overall portfolio. The percent return, whether I'm up or down, what sector it falls into, whether they're a quarterly, monthly, or semi-annual payer, their current dividend yield, my yield on cost, the portfolio weighting. So on the previous slide, we saw the sector weightings. This is the overall, uh, or I'm sorry, this is the individual holdings weighting. So Ally makes up 3.41% of the portfolio, for example. Estimated annual income in this column, payout months, what months they pay out, and the estimated dividend growth, their most recent dividend growth based on their most recent payout. Uh, from year to year and this will fluctuate over time now this last column is where the price it sits at 15 percent of the 52 week low so i am willing to invest into a company whether it, for a couple different uh, metrics here if it's under my cost basis my average share price right so let's look at cvs here currently it's at 67 seven dollars and 32 cents my cost basis is $70.36, so it's under my cost basis, so I'm willing to invest in it. But let's say it was over that. I would be willing to invest up to $76.29, right? So even though a position or a, a price of a stock may be over my cost basis, so long as it is still below its 15% of its 52-week low, I am still willing to add it to the portfolio if it is still presenting value based on 
uh, if I do a discounted cash flow analysis on it and it's presenting value and is under that 15% of that 52 week low. But this is really a helpful metric for me for whenever I add a new position. I wanna try to get the shares as cheap as possible and I don't wanna overpay. So this gives me a breaking point as well. Okay, I'm not gonna pay over this amount. I'm not gonna pay over $27.69 for HPQ, for example. All right. All right, let's run through the totals here. Total shares, 4,766.97 shares total. Current uh, market value is sitting at $163,292.62. I have $167,807.27 into the portfolio. I am down $4,514.66. In the, in the red, in the negative, 2.69%. My current yield for the overall portfolio is sitting at 4.692%. And this took a hit last week when MPW cut their dividend. We nailed exactly what their cut was going to be. I said I would not be interested if they cut it any lower than 0.1515 cents here. And that is exactly what they cut it down to. So I really nailed that one. Uh, it's never good to see a dividend cut, but this one was kind of one I expected. Uh, it does help them get back into a little bit better financial situation. They have more money to help pay down that debt. And hopefully in the future, they continue those dividend uh, dividend growth on, on their payouts. And they still have a very, and this was one of the reasons I was willing to stay with them, because they still have a very high dividend yield. Their current yield is sitting at 8.55%. My yield on cost is sitting at 6.237%. So even though they cut the dividend in half, that is still a very nice dividend yield. And my yield on cost currently is sitting at 4.566%. So a little bit lower than the, the current yield. And this is what it's all about, whether the market's up, whether the market's down, whether the market's floating sideways, the annual income provided by the positions inside the portfolio, $7,661.48 and continues to grow week over week as I add new capital, as the positions in the portfolio uh, pay out their dividends or increase their dividends. And that is what the dividend snowball is all about. And currently, my overall portfolio year over year should grow at 8.09%. So very nice dividend growth year over year for the portfolio as well. Well, that is really it for this one. As always, appreciate you stopping by. If you haven't done so already, don't forget to show me some love. Hit that thumbs up. Ring the notification bell. Most importantly, subscribe to the channel. It really does help out the channel to do all those things. Hit that thumbs up down there. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. It helps out a small YouTube channel like myself, and it does not cost you a thing. Join us on this journey to financial freedom. Join the vested interest community. Really appreciate all of you that come by. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the videos and do all of those three things. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. The channel continues to grow because of people like you and really do appreciate all of you out there. I do personally read and respond to the comments. I'm always interested to read your questions, opinions, or suggestions for future topics. So again, if you have a stock you'd like me to work into the Stock Pick of the Day series, Monday through Thursday, go ahead and drop it down below and I will find a time to make a video on it. And make it a dividend. I know some of you have put in the comments some stocks that don't pay dividends and apologize for that. I do not cover on this channel stocks that don't pay dividends. So for those of you who have made a suggestion for a stock that doesn't pay a dividend, that is the reason I have not done a video on it. This is a dividend growth investing channel. That's what I focus on here. Hopefully that is what you are focused on as well. And this is Shane signing off, wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours. And remember, financial security comes to those who take a vested interest. Hey, thanks for stopping by. Hope you have a great week coming up and we'll see you in the next one. I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing in this presentation should be considered financial advice. I'm only sharing my opinion. Investing journey for educational and entertainment purposes. Investing involves risk. You can't lose money. You should never invest any amount not, you're not comfortable losing. Always do your own research. Invest based on your situation, circumstances, and select criteria. Or seek the advice counsel of a certified financial advisor.